without doubt, the most important concept in all of our digestive system is the pH. And today I want to show you how it changes. The pH changes from the mouth literally right down to the bottom. But a little explanation first. The pH here range from zero up to 14. 14 is really strong, alkaline, and they're the area where you get uh, drain cleaners and things like that. A pH of nine is sodium bicarbonate, and we'll talk about that because your body produces its own sodium bicarbonate and 10. Now, the difference between nine and 10, by the way, isn't one little level, it's 10 levels. So every one of these levels is a level up. Seven is 10 times higher than six, and so on. That's why any changes in the pH mean a big difference in terms of chemistry. And here it is. All chemical reactions rely on the precise pH. So if a small change in pH occurs anywhere in chemistry, then guess what? The chemical reaction either speeds up or slows down or stops altogether. So the pH is critical for all of the chemical reactions. Now looking at this scale, we've got down the bottom here is one which is hydrochloric acid. And you've all heard of that. That's what your stomach produces. Luckily, your stomach also produces sodium bicarbonate, so it doesn't digest itself. And I covered this in my other video on sodium bicarbonate. But in this brown squiggly area is where good digestion occurs in the stomach. Okay, so between two and three is where really good digestion occurs in the stomach. I'll talk about that. And your mouth and small intestine are around about seven, 7.5 and your blood level is 7.365. How precise is that? Because remember, a little change in the pH of that blood pH will stop everything. All those chemical reactions go on in your blood. Every single microsecond is literally going to halt or change. And we don't want that. So we keep it and your body will keep it precisely perfect. And then we go up to, as I said earlier, a bicarbonate which your body produces is nine. So with that understanding, I can, I can just take that straight off the board here. You understand that? And we go up to looking at the digestive system, how it all changes and why. It's so smart. It's incredibly smart. So the first thing is we've got our mouth. We've got a very poor diagram here. Sorry, I failed uh, year 10 arts. So we've got a very poor diagram. And then here in the mouth, your mouth is alkaline. Your um, salivary glands release saliva that has a pH just over seven. So it's slightly alkaline, just above the seven, just slightly alkaline. And the reason it does that, okay, is because at the same time, it releases enzymes for digestion and the enzymes that are released, so the first thing is the sodium bicarbonate, the second one is the enzymes, and these enzymes that are released ideally work in a pH of around about you guessed it, seven. So it set up the digestion of all the things that you're gonna eat in your mouth, hmm, it's chewing your eye, saliva's released, digestion occurs, and it begins at a pH of seven. Now, at a pH of seven, it's also antibacterial. Well, at least it's anti-static, uh, static bacterial. In other words, the bacteria can't grow, and as a result of that, you don't get tooth decay. But once you start getting acid-loving bacteria growing in your mouth, you end up with tooth decay and gum diseases. So the best thing to do is to make sure that the pH of your uh, saliva is around about seven. And I'll do another little video how to test that later on. But uh, uh, it's really important to be seven now. And seven sets up all the triggers, but it also sets up communication going to the body to say, here comes this food. It's got a pH of around about, guys, it's going down, of around about seven, okay? And as it goes down there, it gets to the top of the stomach. Your stomach registers it. It starts still digesting at a pH, you know, a slightly uh, um, pH of a six or seven. And then your stomach, literally, you ready? Your stomach releases uh, acid, hydrochloric acid. That's the pH of one. And that releases it, and the hydrochloric acid I'll go straight over to here, so it releases this uh, hydrochloric acid, and that that um, uh, hydrochloric acid is potently antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial. So it's going to stop all those nasty uh, bacteria and microorganisms in the environment all around us. On an apple, you've got uh, something like 100 million bacteria. Now, keep eating the apples because they're good bacteria, by the way, but everything you breathe in ultimately goes into your digestive system. And so you want this purification device and that's 
what it is. It's a purification device. I'll come to that. So it releases um, a hydrochloric acid and it's diluted a little bit so the pH will be two or three. Still very, very acid. It also releases enzymes. And these enzymes, a particular one called pepsin, breaks down proteins. And these proteins, as they're broken down, go into uh, what are called peptides and then amino acids. And they go around the body and do all the important things. A, a bit on that in a moment. But it works, this enzyme works in a pH of two to three. Now it will work at a level of four and five and six, but it works ideally. So if you want really good, perfect digestion in the stomach, the pH has to be around about two to three, and then everything breaks down. And that takes me to here. So it facilitates, the acid stomach facilitates perfect digestion. And that perfect digestion breaks down all the proteins. And all those proteins are really big twisted molecules and the hydrochloric acid or the pH opens them up and allows the pepsin to work. Now, if you don't have the, the hydrochloric acid opening them up, they're like this, so you only get a bit of digestion occurring. And these big molecules then pass through literally into your intestines and large intestine and create havoc because they're not digested. And if they're not digested, they go into the large intestine and they ferment. And that's when you get a lot of health problems occurring. So the digestion, you break down all the protein. By the way, all these proteins that break down to the amino acids are all the working molecules in your body. They go to form your neurotransmitters, all the messages that go around your nervous system and your brain. Things like melatonin for sleep and serotonin. You ready for feeling good? Oxytocin, all of those good feeling chemicals, all those chemicals that coordinate every single movement you do every microsecond are made up of these proteins, but they have to be digested first. And that's what happens in the stomach when you've got an acid pH. If you don't, then you don't have the working molecules. The collagen for your skin is another one. That literally is broken down. The building blocks are amino acids and they come from the digestion or, or the digestion of proteins. So you need that digestion to occur to have beautiful skin. Or your collagen also goes into your tendons and your bones and everywhere else in your body. And so, oh, by the way, and your intestines. So you want healthy intestines, you need collagen. And to get the collagen, you need digestion in a pH of two to three. So we've got all that. You've got your B vitamins. Your B vitamins are actually digested again at a pH of three. So it has to be acidic. And if you don't have pH three, then you're low on B vitamins. There's so many people, you go, oh, I don't get you know, it. I have to supplement with folate and B12 and, um, oh, guess what? Yeah, yeah. First thing to do is make sure your stomach acid is digesting, so then you get the B vitamins. And of course, minerals. And along with deficiencies in B vitamins, um, you end up with deficiencies in iron, zinc, calcium, magnesium, selenium, all these essential minerals. Um, calcium, you know, oh, low in calcium. Well, first of all, get the digestion in the stomach going. Low in iron, oh, get the digestion in the stomach going. If you're not digesting, you cannot Okay, if you don't have the pH, you can't digest. If you don't digest, you can't get the minerals. They're locked away in a matrix in the food. So we get the protein, B vitamins. And the second task of the acid in the stomach is purification that I already touched on briefly. But the first thing it does is it starts to break down toxic chemicals. So some of those really simple chemicals out there, ah, you take a breath in of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde gets into the stomach, and of course the stomach chime in there starts to break it down, breaks it all down. But lots of other even more complex chemicals are broken down in the stomach, and then you get literally onto your um, allergens. So all of your allergens are, um, are the proteins I already talked about, things from, let's say, peanut, peanut allergies. The, the peanut allergen is a protein. And if you're not digesting it in the stomach and breaking it down into its amino acids, then it goes into your large intestine and causes havoc. Or gluten. If you're not digesting it, and gluten is really hard to digest, even in a good, healthy stomach. And if you're not digesting it, it goes through into your large intestine and causes havoc there, which is what I've got another presentation, another video on. Just uh, have a look at the video on gluten. You will be amazed. And of course, you'll, you'll understand why you need to cut down your gluten and why you need to increase your stomach acid. So all of your allergens, to reduce that allergenic exposure, you need a, an acid stomach. And the third one, as I've already mentioned, bacteria. It cuts down, it kills, it eliminates, it controls the bacteria. So 
all of those microorganisms are eliminated or kept down at a very low number. And so what happens then is that they don't get into the small intestine because if they do get into the small intestine, then you're gonna end up with havoc. The wrong microorganisms growing in the wrong space and as a result, you'll end up with lots of gut-related issues. For example, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, SIBO. Bloating is a very common feature of that. And uh, I'll, I'll put a presentation, but it's really, you've got to make sure your stomach is acid to prevent this occurring. And if you do have SIBO, you've got to make sure it's, it's acid so that it actually helps reduce SIBO. So coming back here, and the last thing is communication. pH is one of the main communicating molecules, or one of the main communicating processes throughout the digestive system. It tells it to open up and close. It tells it to move. So an acid stomach actually says to the little muscle ring up here, your lower esophageal sphincter, L-E-S, it says to your L-E-S, close off. So when you've got an acid stomach, it says, close off. Oh, so then you don't get the reflux. But when you've got an acid stomach and it really gets acid again, down here in the stomach, it says, open up. Wow, fantastic, isn't it? It opens up and it allows the food to go through into the small intestine. Now, once that gets into the small intestine, it can, you know, it has all its own chemical reactions going on, but the coordination of it is done by the pH. So again, it opens up, it closes up the top uh, sphincter there, the top muscle, the LES, and it opens up the other one to get rid of everything out of the stomach so you don't feel like your stomach is fallen. And it's just something called one of the processes of gastritis, okay? So you don't feel full because it opens up and lets it through. Now, the other thing that that does, when, you, when it opens up and it sends this message through to your small intestine to start getting the waves of motions going, the motor motion network down there through the small intestine, which is that red squiggly bit here, all of that is controlled by the pH. So an acid stomach sends a message to say, turn on the motor, get it running through the intestines, open everything up, let's move it through. So one of the simplest things, by the way, you can do if you want to reduce constipation is, guess what? Increase the stomach acid. Why? Because it sets off those motor motions going all the way through the rest of the digestive system. It is so important. So you understand that one? Then it goes into the small intestine. And in the small intestine here, that's, a, as I said, the red squiggly bit in there. The small intestine is alkaline again because all of a sudden your pancreas releases sodium bicarb. Wow. So you have a sodium bicarbonate store in your body. Yeah, yeah. Exactly the same as the one you buy in the supermarket, but a little bit neater and nicer and purified. And there it is and it releases it and it takes the pH back to about seven to eight. Now we only can do that, you ready? If the stomach is acid. So it says, release the sodium bicarb. It also then says, release the bile, release the enzymes. And as a result, it's all antibacterial. Bile has a pH of around about eight. So everything in the small intestine, just straight out of the stomach, is about having an alkaline small intestine. Why? Because it stops the bacteria growing. And if you have bacteria growing there, you have serious health conditions. Anyone will tell you about their bloating and so on, primarily coming from the bacteria growing in the small intestine that I've said a few times. But the sodium bicarb alkalizes it, stops it going. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure the acid stomach, so it sends the signals to alkalize your small intestine. You need to make sure you've got a good sodium bicarbonate store, which I talk about in the other video on sodium bicarbonate. The enzymes are released. And guess what pH the enzymes work at? They work at a pH of around, you ready? Seven, neutral. And how does that occur? Because the sodium bicarb neutralizes it. And then the enzyme starts digesting everything. Anything that's not digested in the stomach is further digested. You've got your carbohydrate and your fat things, what's called amylase and lipase. They start digesting everything else along with the proteins and it goes through the intestines and then the bacteria start working, but you've got to have that sodium bicarb, you've got to have that alkalization of your small intestine. And it goes in, small intestine, wanders all the way through, and as it goes through, the bacteria start growing, but that's okay. As it starts going through, and as it starts going through, 
The bacteria are fermenting the foods that aren't digested. And the foods that aren't digested literally okay, go through and uh, cause other, other problems. The gut bacteria ferment them and ideally everything can be broken down so your body can use it. And as a result, it goes into your large intestine, this little green bit here you can see I've got there, and fermentation occurs. And when fermentation occurs, it produces what's called the short chain fatty acids, SCFAs. These short chain fatty acids are wonderful. We're now discovered they're almost the, uh, the, the, the miracle um, treatment for so many conditions out there. There's one called propionate, acetate, oh, you know acetate, vinegar. Then it goes acetic acid in there. And then butyrate, which is probably the most recently studied and just coming up with so many links in anti-Alzheimer's, anti-Parkinson's, anti-cancer, anti-cardiovascular disease. And where does it come from? The fermentation of fibres and polyphenols. That's why we, I'm always telling people, have a combination of fibres because that gets the right pH. And by the way, the pH in there is three to four. And if you've got the right pH there, then it stops the, some of the nastiest bacteria, e.g. Clostridium, and e.g. The, some of the worst molds that, 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 that might take off, or the fungi there take off and start growing. And so as a result, it controls all the bacteria again. Wow, this is so fantastic, isn't it? So it goes from alkaline to acid, to alkaline to acid again, and it comes out there and it, and it just controls the bacteria growth and regulates it, and it helps with all the digestive processes. This is without doubt the single most important concept in digestion. Without the right pH, nothing happens at all. So you have to get that variation going on. Now, if you like that, this video, please click the, click the likes, pass it around, share it with your friends because this concept, and it's so easy, you'll see from my other video I've got on sodium bicarbonate, it's so easy, and the one I got on vinegar, to start to begin to alter your pH. It'll probably cost you about 10 cents a week. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So like this, share it, please subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be putting up lots and lots of information on digestion, which I've been working on for over 20 years now. All the gut-related and health-related issues. That's gonna go up, and I look forward to presenting you with a lot more information.